Wow, look at this. She's been evading us over the past few drives. We've had her tracks. We've been spending so much time searching for her. And finally, we got her. This is Karula. Welcome on board this live safari. And you don't get off to a much better start than this. Sure. Okay. My name is Scott, everyone. I'm teamed up with VM on camera. And it's great to have you with us. It's very thick here. I've caught Brent into the area. He's also out with us this morning. And he's going to come in just to make sure we don't lose her in this very thick bush. We are close to the Galago waterhole. So very close to the Juma camps called Vuyatela and Galago. And we were actually making our way to the hyena den. When we bumped into her, she was literally walking down the road straight towards us. But it was on a hairpin bend. And she just veered directly off that road as we found her. So timing was hugely on our side. Whew, my heart is racing. It's so exciting. We lost her initially. Oh, what is she sniffing? I think. That might even be a small stalk. There may be a bird or something in there. No. But you can see she's sniffing around very, very intently. Brent's just got a hold of me on the radio, and I just need to respond to him quickly, so give me a moment. Copy that, Brent. Uh, good luck. Shame, poor old Brent and Andrew appear to be having some technical difficulties. Look at this. I love these kinds of shots when you get to see... One of the most stealthiest of the big cats moving through thick bush. And you get a good idea how they can dis disappear just like ghosts into their surroundings. Now, speaking of disappearing like ghosts, because Brent does have tip, uh, some tech issues, he needs to try and get that sorted. Therefore, we are alone with her and we do not want to let her disappear like a ghost, like I've just said. So, bear with me as I try my best. Concentrate with her. Concentrate with her. She concentrates as we try and follow her. Oh, there's not enough of a gap there. But having spent so much time following these animals with VM over the past year, we've become a great team and VM knows exactly what he needs to do while I'm focusing on off-roading and he's constantly keeping an eye on her and also giving me very useful updates as to where she is in relation to the comments of the vehicle or the hood of the vehicle. So that helps greatly. That's why we don't have too much to worry about. Here she goes. Well, so, so happy to hear that all of you guys are so happy. That makes... One very happy safari vehicle with hundreds, possibly thousands of people all joining in together. And if this is your first time, please let us know. And if it's not your first time and you've been a long time viewer, maybe you should phone a friend and tell them to log on and join us because this would be a great time to showcase Safari Life to some more people. And I'm even thinking about getting my phone out and phoning my friends, although here in South Africa, it's still very early in the morning, 5 a.m., and I think most of my friends will still be fast asleep. But you guys in different time zones, go on. We should be sharing this with as many people as possible. And as it becomes, to, as it becomes more light with the slowly rising sun, we are getting some wonderful views of her. You can see she's very, very focused this morning. She's using her nose predominantly in this thick bush, which you can notice she's sniffing nose to the ground, nose in bushes. Possibly she can smell some prey. Or possibly she can smell another leopard. Or both. Now, as I off-road, please understand that I know which trees can kind of tolerate a little bit of bullying. And most of these trees are very flexible and will just pop directly back up. Where did 
check over here, mate. I was so focused on the monitor, we headed off more to the right, yeah. Good. Oh. Yeah, be careful, there's a little button at the one. It's just got snagged on the vehicle, and that will be very unpleasant for them if it gets tangled in that. Mild panic as I can't see her. Oh no, where have you gone, Karina? This wouldn't be good if we've lost her already, especially after just saying that VM and I are a formidable team when it comes to following these animals. <laughs> scrub here running about so that one was lucky to escape there we hit a bit of a dead end here let's see if we can't squirrel through this way panic um, and I hope some of you are still phoning your friends <laughs> don't tell them not to bother even though we've temporarily lost her but I think we're gonna find her moving through this very bush that has been quite tricky as I'm sure you can see Lisa in Wisconsin, and you're right, it is incredibly thick here, um, which is clearly making our lives a little bit trickier than we would have liked, but we are still in the general area, and even though we may have temporarily lost her, I'm confident that we might be able to get some more views, just need to be positive, I guess. Step safaris it's a new discovery for you and you've even got your mother involved now so you've been a good safari live messenger so thank you very much for that and we've been doing these drives since november last year at this location consistently so not november last year november 2014 um so quite some time now, but Safari Live has been going even before that with various other projects that are usually not as long a term of projects, more, sh more short term. And it's been going for many, many years. What started off just still images being uploaded. Uh, okay, so... Sadly, because Brent is busy trying to fix his vehicle, we can't send you across to him for me to focus on trying to find his leopard. But let's just keep cool and do a big loop ahead. What I'm going to do is just check on my GPS exactly where we are. So using technology to cheat a little bit. And that way we'll have an idea of where the closest road is. 
and it's a tricky area. I can actually show you quickly. Um, so she's been following. We lost her in that little blue dotted line. But she's been heading in a westerly direction, so she's probably going to pop out on Gallagher shortcut. So that's why I'm going to loop around too quickly. Sounds like Brent may be back up and running. Go ahead, Brent. He's just got a hold of me on the radio. Brent, I lost her in the small drainage heading west up to Gallagher shortcuts. Head there, I'm also just going to head up to Gallagher shortcut. We can both see it around there. up and running and he's not too far away from you like I said we are close to camp and I hope showing you that map gave you a little bit more of an idea of where we were in relation to the closest road and also at least now you've also got an idea of which direction she was moving in which was a westerly direction obviously she could change direction depending on what she comes across and we got, we're going to send you across to Brent quickly and we'll probably see you on the road just up ahead in just a few minutes. But over to Brent and we'll see you later. Good morning and welcome to Friday Live. What a bang of a start. Uh, Karula is around. Uh, I know Scotty's lost her, but Andrew, who's my cameraman today, and myself, Brent Deer Smith, are on our way to give him a hand. Hopefully we're going to be able to find her. Uh, it is always great to start with the leopard and uh, it's us lots very very excited and she's been literally with Scotty Founders probably about a hundred meters um, from our camp uh, she's probably been cackling at us for the last day or two so we're now in the area to give Scotty a hand and it is a particularly difficult drainage line where Scotty lost her and uh, we've lost many a leopard in that particular area so hopefully she pops out onto this road. I can see Scotty's lights in the bush off to the right there. Really exciting start to the morning and a big welcome to Meredith uh, and Corey. Uh, Corey is Meredith's boyfriend. He's watching for the first time and they're in Victoria in Canada. So I'm quite sure they're used to seeing polar bears as opposed to lions and leopards. Uh, hopefully, Corey, we can show you a leopard this morning. And Meredith, a big thank you for inviting Corey to join us on these live African safaris. Corey, if you're wondering about what we're doing and you'd like to ask us a question or two, you can do that by dropping us an email, questions at wildearth.tv. Or if you're a little bit more technologically savvy, uh, you can use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. So Scotty's in there, so he lost her somewhere in this area here. Yeah. So he's gonna okay, go very, very quiet. This little drainage, and then she dropped down into it. So she's tended to be heading north and west. Okay, so Scotty's here. We're gonna head into the bottom. There's a diker, that is not what we're looking for. We're not looking for a little antelope, um, but rather a member of the big five. Andrew, I hope your eyes are sharp today. said someone had referring to my excitement uh, and sleep, sleepy one said Brent is bright hard and bushy tailed but well, I guarantee you it's nothing to do with coffee it's all to do with having a big cat close in close proximity so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit here and we're gonna listen quietly for a second or two because leopards 
often will give away their position or not on purpose by a little bird like a rattling cesticula and they'll walk past them and they'll start going psh, 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 psh. so we're just going to listen quickly and a quick update on the other big cats while we're listening um, i did hear lions at about five past four this morning and fortunately they were very far to the east uh, and sounded well well east of our eastern boundary unfortunately the only thing i'm hearing at the moment is andrew's breathing so it seems like angie in ohio also heard lions at about 2 30 this morning Angie, uh, I was in bed. I didn't hear those ones. I only heard the ones at about five past four. But more than likely the same lines. And there are two different sets of lines around at the moment. I think the ones I heard um, were the Birmingham's. And they were to the east. And I, I heard over the radio that uh, the Bir one of the Birmingham males is mating with Styx lionesses again. Uh, I'm not sure which Styx lioness, um, <clears throat> but that's well to the east of us. And then in the north, in Buffalo's Hook, there's the Salati males and the Talamati pride. I didn't, I didn't hear them. I know they're probably about as far as you can get from us in Buffalo's Hook, in the northeastern corner on the boundary of the Manuleti and Kruger with the Sabi Sands. And uh, Kachina John is wondering any updates on the boomers. Uh, I wish there were. I have no idea where they are or what they're up to. Um, uh, I think just before Andrew and I went on leave uh, on the 1st of January, uh, just before that there was an update that they were on in Coral uh, and were mating with the Birmingham males. But uh, since then, I haven't heard anything and uh, I don't think Scott and Jamie have either. So, just in case she decides to be really sneaky, I, I can see Scott's now move, move off uh, the out of the bush onto the road. Uh, and so he can cover that section. And there's an old sightings road that we're traveling on now um, where the lions had a kill many moons ago. Uh, and we're gonna just see, maybe check that she didn't cut more north through the drainage line. Uh, Andrew, I hope your eyes are, are working. Um, oh dear. Well, some of the strong wind has uh, made the sightings road very short. See, there's a river tree that's fallen off it, and I'm pretty sure we can find a way around. And also closer to the little creek bed or drainage line that she went into. So, Nolene is a spot on since Brula has pulled this appearing hat. And of all the leopards I've spent a lot of time with in my. Sorry, I'm just listening to Scott. Um, uh, in all my history of tracking leopards, Kruda has proved to be probably one of the most tricky, definitely the most tricky female to track. Uh, she has a vast territory. I'll tell you why in a second. Let's just get through here. Uh, I'd rather not be attached to this uh, knob fawn tree. And even though it doesn't look like it, if you look closely, there's some very nice little hooked thorns. Uh, and I, I tend to, after uh, having a nyala on my lap, I tend to prefer not having perforated flesh. So as you can see, leopards do like these little drainage systems or creek beds. And you can see they're quite thick. And also, there's a drop here, probably of about eight or nine feet down to the base. And obviously that makes following them in a vehicle very difficult. So we're gonna check around this area a little bit more carefully. And while we do that, um, Scotty is checking the road in case you... Just hang on, here we go. Um, there was a crested Franklin uh, that screamed in a sound... Uh, that sounded like complete panic. 
and that could very easily be uh, the leopard. So we're going to shoot towards that and Scott's going to check on the road and she might pop out in that direction. So let's go see with Scotty. We're going to try get towards where that Franklin was alarm calling. Hello everyone and isn't this exciting? The thrill of the chase now. I can also hear some Franklin, crested Franklin, they are alarm calling in the bush up ahead of us somewhere in there. As you can see, it's incredibly thick. And sometimes it's just good to stop and listen for a moment just to see if we can't gather any more information from Mother Nature. And James Francis, you have just admitted to the terrible disease of FOMO, which is the fear of missing out. Thanks to Safari Live, and you're right, James. Um, I'm told, I, w I wasn't watching, but I think you might be able to see Brent moving through the thick bush up ahead of us here. Go ahead, Brent. And he's just giving me an update as to where you can hear that. Franklin is, and copy that, I think I've got it as well. I'm just at the old hyena den now. I'm gonna get back onto Gallagher shortcuts. Apologies everyone, just important for us to try and be as efficient as possible and quick as possible with these updates so we know what's going on with one another. But James, you're right, even for myself, there's the old hyena den. And even when it's our morning off, not to be on drive, I also have the same FOMO as you. Fear not, I don't think you're alone there. Okie dokie, now. <laughs> now what I want to do, even though Brent has heard those alarm calls in the drainage, I want to stick to the easy areas to check and be able to cover more ground. It could be that the Franklin heard something else and I just want to actually go in the opposite direction temporarily. We're going to go down this road and then turn around and come back up. We don't see her on it. And what I'm hoping is going to happen is she is going to reach this kind of major highway after being on these smaller pathways through the thick bush and then hopefully stick to the major highway for some time, allowing us to either see some tracks or see her on the road. So that's what I'm hoping for. Now, sadly, she was heading in the completely opposite direction to the Juma waterhole camera. So, you guys aren't going to be able to assist us there, unfortunately. She's heading north and west away from where the waterhole is. Let's turn around quickly. This is the usual Karula behavior of hide and seek, and she really does give us a run around. And Sin appears to think that this is keeping us entertained to a degree, Sin. Um, this leopard is also giving us gray hairs. We don't see her nearly as much as we would like to. And she's basically occupying the whole core of Juma. So she's, she's not really helping us much at the moment with the amount of sightings we have of her or the areas we find her in and lose her in. So entertainment versus frustration, I'm not too sure which is which. <laughs> A degree of entertainment, but probably more frustration, to be honest, at this stage. <laughs> but that's the reality of being out on one of these live safaris, or on safari in general. The animals go wherever they please, and sometimes it is through thick bush. Barbara, and you, do, you are enjoying this leopard size 
fighting, but certainly don't want her to bump into the hyenas and cause any trouble with those cubs. I find it highly, highly unlikely that she would attempt to try and attack those hyena and their cubs. It would be a very risky move for her, and unless one cub was quite far out of the den when, with no adults around, which is unlikely, she is probably going to steer clear of that area. So have to worry about that happening. I don't think it would be, again, highly, highly unlikely. Oh, where have you gone to, you know? Mike in Florida, and you're interested to know how many more litters of cubs do I think Karula has in her? Well, she's only turning 12, and I think it's March, I'm told, so she's still got time on her side, and she could well easily live up to around 18 years of age, and depending on how successful she is in raising litters to maturity, she could give birth to, to many cubs that are killed because it's only a three-month gestation period and if they lose cubs, they'll tend to mate quite quickly again. Although, whether she's done that now and we haven't seen future cubs or, or, or cubs since her past litter, I'm not too sure. I think that is the case and I think that since she lost her last official cubs that we knew of in December uh, 2014, late December, basically the turn of 2015, she could well have given birth again and we just simply may have not seen the cubs before they were killed. But let's say that she does successfully raise cubs, she could easily raise three more litters. Two years, two years, two years, taking up to about 18 years of age, and that starts, that's, you know, that's old for a leopard, even though they can live into their 20s. And there's some food for her. To Dyker. And there's the other one. Two males, interesting. It could be a son. Or it could be two males fighting with one another, I'm not too sure. And Paul, you, you just made a comment saying that we aren't looking for little antelope today, more the animals that eat them. And yes, that was the case, but now we are, we've, we've reversed. We reverse psychology. We're hoping that if we stay with the prey, the predator will come to them. Um, I'm just going to show you where we, we are in relation to where we were. So, where I've dropped that pin is where we were. Um, and she was in this little riverbed that you can see with this blue dotted line. So we lost her basically where the crosshairs are. And she could have followed this drainage, but that's where Brent was initially waiting when you joined him. Um, and now we've turned onto this road up here. Um, so we've driven up and turned onto this road and we're waiting just about here somewhere. Um, so she could be anywhere in this general area, let's hope. Brent's trying to get a hold of me again. Go ahead, Brent. Okay, copy. I'm on Gallagher shortcut, shortcut, shortcuts. <laughs> um, should I just stay at that junction with Gallagher shortcuts? Okay, copy. Very good. Okay. Apologies for that. Um, quite complicated giving and receiving directions in this area, but Brent says he has got tracks over. He's down to our right in this bush, and he says she is heading up towards this road that we are on. It's 
so she appears to have veered more north. And this road will bend more in a northerly direction. You can see we're driving straight towards the sun now, so we're heading east. And where this road kinks more to the north is the, is the area where Brent says those tracks are heading. And so things are still looking good, guys. We've still got a chance, and well done to Brent for finding those tracks. How on earth he did that, I don't know, but well done. to know what does Karula mean and it means peaceful one but Johnny's made a funny comment saying that Karula means cannot find in the local language which is Shangan and nice Johnny that is exactly what she what it means in Shangan or between us but it means peaceful um, And we see so little of her these days. She could be peaceful, she could be angry, she could be anything. But many years ago, Wild Earth uh, used to have some wonderful, wonderful viewings of her. And a lot of cubs were seen being raised to maturity. I think three or four generations were monitored by various Safari Live crews. And she's done very well up till date raising a cup successfully she's been dubbed the queen of juma which she still is she has just now become the elusive queen of juma i remember having a leopard on our pro uh, a property where i used to work in the southern Sahara sands and it was a bigger property that, that, than we can traverse here, so we had several female leopards that we could view, thankfully. But one of them used to occupy a territory uh, in the middle of our property, and she was very, very shy and skittish, like leopards usually are. They usually don't like being seen by humans, and it's taken many, many years of gentle habituation to get them used to the vehicles here in the Saudi Sands, and that's why we do usually have such good viewings of them. Now, like I said, this female leopard was incredibly skittish. We only used to get fleeting glimpses of her, and even if she had a kill that we would find, by the time we got to the kill, she would have already run off. And I mean, that's rare to not even see a leopard hanging around a kill. But it used to kill us because she just occupied this territory and because she was keeping other female leopards that were, would have been relaxed at bay, it really made our lives a misery. And there was late night plots as to how to get rid of her, only joking, but I said that the other day jokingly, the ruler, it's time that we get a change and find a leopard that enjoys being in front of the camera. Also one that provides us with babies to view. Both would be nice. And it's actually phenomenal that how unlucky we've been to this day that we haven't actually had any leopard cubs to view. But it all means that we're just gaining credits for the future. And that's life on safari. Not every day can be action packed with awesome sightings. And it is a beautiful morning, that's for certain, so we've won that competition. And let's just stop here and take a breather for a moment. Southern Grey Hornbills calling. And it's a wonderful call, the Southern Grey Hornbills. Looks like a family of them all communicating. I could see some of the individuals flying off with very small beaks indicating that they were young fledglings from this year. But Brent, I have reached the fire break on Gallagher Shortcut Cubed and I'm now going to be heading back south. So 
Brent is coming towards me, we're heading towards him and we'll meet somewhere in the middle. He'll probably continue up and I'll probably continue around and take Gallagher's shortcuts. In a situation like this, it really doesn't hurt just to double check similar areas. You could pop out anywhere here at any moment. And we're going to send you across to Brent's vehicle. We'll see you shortly, a little bit further down this road. So Queen Karula, up to her normal shenanigans. Uh, we have tracks of her going through uh, one of these little uh, creek beds or drainage systems, a particularly big one. And the big problem about this area as she's in at the moment is there's five in a row. And it makes it incredibly difficult uh, to stick with her. Uh, but hopefully, between Scotty and myself, we can guess where she's gonna come out from her tracks. Uh, hopefully it's somewhere on this little road here, which is the second shortcut of Gallagher shortcut, which can become very confusing. And uh, Scotty is heading from the boundary towards us, and we're heading from Gallagher. Just heard some Franklin going absolutely nuts. And I don't know if you heard that. Chat, 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 chat. Um, that's often a good sign that there's a, a predator on the ground. Um, they came out of here, which would mean instead of crossing straight across that, that little creek bed like we thought she maybe has moved up it. Where, where is Karula? exploded out of the bush here. Now, sometimes it'll explode with efforts, maybe even 15, 20 meters away, just in case it pounces on them. So what we're looking for at the moment is that little white spot, the, the back end of her tail, any little bit of movement. Uh, obviously that white stands out against the bush. So it's, a, it's, a, it's one of the ways we, we, we spot animals. So your eyes are muscle like any other muscle in your body. The more you train them, the better you get at using them. So anything that slightly doesn't fit uh, or a slight bit of color, that's what we're looking for. Okay, let's move a little bit further forward. I mean, we know she's here. It's just a matter of finding out exactly where. So Carla, a very good morning to you, Carla, um, who's in Vermont. Carla's wondering, do any of these animals have tracking tags or tracking collars? Carla, we like to do it the old-fashioned way, you know, good hard work, sweat and tears. Uh, so none of them do. So when we talk about tracking an animal, we actually talk about following its footprints uh, and finding it the old-fashioned way. And fortunately, in the Sabi Sands, most of the, the tracking is done like that. We don't uh, need to have a tracking. Oh, we can hear Scott laughing at something. I'm sure VM is being a, a comedian. And VM can be very, very funny when he wants to be. So you heard that, that very loud laugh from Scotty. Uh, he's about to join us. Um, he should be with us in a couple of minutes. But sorry, Carla. So there's so many, not so many vehicles, but the vehicles here drive around and, and, and all of us can track and track on foot. There's no need for a sort of a tracking collar. Obviously with Karula, sometimes it feels like there is a need, but that would take half the fun away from being in the bush, not being able to track on foot. And here comes Scotty and Vim. I, I, I'm quite interested to hear what, what whatever the joke was uh, that, that got Scotty laughing so much. Uh, we could hear him coming from a mile away. Look at that, look at that big smile on his face. Uh, Vim, what did you say? What, what, John? Yes. Oh no, that was Nicky. We heard a, we heard a funny comment through from John. Ah. John, 
said little play on words that Karula has pissed off. <laughs> and that's exactly what she's done, John, as normal. Um, Brent, there were two diker meandering through this little area, so... We just had two pairs of Franklin burst out from about 50 meters in here and fly off screaming. Okay, so, well, hopefully she's stalking those diker. Yeah. She's definitely here, and uh, as Karula does, she likes... I, I'm convinced Karula has got magic shoes with little wings on them that enable her to fly over roads where we can't see her tracks. By wings, you mean her flabby belly. Yes, possibly. That she turns into a possum suit, like yeah. a flying squirrel. Exa exactly. <laughs> she glides across the roads. Andrew just wagged his finger at me. <laughs> <laughs> mentioning clearly that I'll get in trouble if I say nasty things yeah. about Karula, but she's being nasty, so we're just giving a bit, a bit of her own medicine. <laughs> yeah. And and it's quite interesting, like Karula, as as she gets older, that 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 flabby belly Scotty's uh, talking about will get more and more pronounced. Uh, and I know a lot of you always wonder about: Is she pregnant? Is she going to have cubs? And with all the lepers, I mean, she is going to turn 12 this year. Uh, it's it's near impossible for us to discern whether she she's pregnant or got cubs till she actually has the cubs and we start seeing suckle marks around her around her teeth. So um, maybe she's pregnant, maybe she's not. <laughs> we, we we have no idea till she actually gives birth, uh, and that's very common in in a lot of older older leopards that you're not able to actually see that pregnancy because of her previous litters. Um, that 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 belly becomes more and more flabby. So what's your plan? I was just going to ask you. Should we, should we swap sides? Yeah, let's swap. Let's swap. There you go. So basically we, we are doubling our chances. Scotty's going to go back where I've come from and I'm going to go back where Scotty's come from. So good luck. Good luck. See you later. And in that way, we, we're doubling our chances. And one must remember, fighting animals is a team game. Um, and the more eyes, or almost boots on the ground, uh, or tires on the on the track, so to speak, we have the greater chance we have of finding that animal. It also helps that our cameramen are, are really great at spotting, uh, and that they're, they're, they're in a really good position because they're probably about half a meter actually probably even a full meter higher than us and that enables them to look down into the bush which is which is very beneficial for us that really ties into to what uh, Scott and I were just discussing uh, and the question is from the land of the long white cloud and uh, that is New Zealand for those of you who are not sure uh, I just have to say I just have to say <coughs> about the Rugby World Cup uh, don't want to talk about that it's still very sore uh, my poor iPhone took quite a beating when, when we lost to New Zealand. I forgot it on my lap and I jumped up and smashed the screen. Uh, but uh, Roseanne, who's in the land of the long white cloud, um, says, is it possible that she's got cubs? And as I was just explaining, Roseanne, uh, it's near impossible for us to tell unless we start seeing those suckle marks. And we have seen her recently and I haven't seen any suckle marks on her. So it's it's unlikely that she's got cubs at the moment. We've got a little, oh, of course, everything takes off when you say, there it is. But um, when you get the through the gap there, there's the, the fork-tailed drongo. Keep the bird as happy. And I don't know if you can I've come to the right a bit there. I don't know. I oh, know they're flying, don't worry. But there's a flock of arrow marked babblers as well. It's quite an interesting call. I don't know if you guys can hear that in the in the background. So that sounds to me like a fork-tailed drongo imitating very badly, which is quite unusual because they're normally very good uh, mimics of other bird claws. But it sounds like the fork-tailed drongo mimicking a, a, a barred owlet. There's the culprit up in the tree. Oh, no, it's, <laughs> of course, it's flown away. Um, 
So we're going to just go a little bit further forward. Sorry about that, I just was listening to Scotty. He's going back towards the north just in case she's managed to slip between us. So um, we're going to just, I'm, I don't know, with me, a lot of a lot of my tracking of leopards and, and lions and stuff like that, I mean, you can have the tracks and it's perfectly wonderful, wonderful and you follow the track. But um, for me, a lot of it, I like to go on my gut. And fortunately, either I'm quite lucky or, or my gut's got quite a good sense of where things pop out. You can hear that. Which is that, to me, sounds like a folktale drongo mimicking a bar dial. So I'm just listening now. And keep a close look out for a little flash of white. And quite often when we're looking into thick bush, that is the moment of, uh, the eureka moment when it comes to finding leopards. Of course, being Karula, uh, and said she's probably one of the more difficult female leopards I've ever tracked. Uh, I've never met a leopard who changes her mind so often. I was gonna say something that might be like most women, but I'm probably going to get in trouble for that. So, I mean, we followed her for, I think, nearly three hours the one morning, and she changed direction five times. She went north, south, east, west, and then north again. And she is a particular fan of this area that's got these five little uh, creek beds or drainage lines or tiny little river systems. These are actually the headwaters of the Mawati, which is that sand river we, we sometimes drive down on drive and for a leopard it's really ideal country very broken lots of dips and whatnot so lots of places to hide and sneak up on potential prey species the one reason i think she hasn't been spending as much time here uh, as she has in the past is the fact that the hyenas have been really really active in this area um there was the den on galago shortcut and now there's the den on Nvubu. And basically between those two roads is where these, these drainage systems are. So the hyena den, current hyena, active hyena den. So here we go, we've got that distinct alarm call from a crested Franklin again. Of course it could be a, 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 a slender mongoose or something, but the fact that that's Karula's around here and she's moving in this direction, Yeah, right there. No. That is a very upset Franklin. But they only do that if, they, if, if there's a predator quite close in their proximity. Now, now it's a it's a, it's a job of weighing up the options. Uh, do we go off road there and, and potentially miss her because we we we're super focused on a specific area, or do we sit here uh, and increase our sort of our view where we get, we have a, a wider view and, and wait it out? And, and, and it's a 50-50 call which one is right. So, Andrew, what do you think? Do we go in or do we stand by? Go in, go in. Andrew wants to go in. I'm still in two minds. I think, I think we should flip a coin. Liz on Twitter says, oh, I'm glad to see no one's on Rusty. She's quite happy that uh, we're on more reliable vehicles. This, we actually are on Rusty uh, at the moment. The major difference is that um, the, the high lift jack there, which was bright red, um, I, I attacked with a can of spray paint yesterday. Uh, and so that's, we are on Rusty, not Wendy. It's just that the, the jack has been spray painted. I think I did a fantastic job. I don't know what you think. Maybe maybe uh, if, if, if Safari Live doesn't work out, I can get a job spray painting cars. A graffiti artist. A graffiti artist. There we go. Scott's back. 
Uh, and um, he's done another loop round. We've just heard Franklin Alarm calling yeah, again. You should actually jump across onto our vehicle and look at how, how many spots Fred missed from. Hey, hey, hey it's first lap. It's first lap. Uh, I'm going to do another lap. Poor craftsmanship. Yes. Okay, so next time you, you, you can spray paint it. There's no, no appreciation. And uh, there we go. Look at this. I mean. It's just little red blotches everywhere. But, I mean, I guess in your defense, Brent, you did achieve what you set out to achieve. And there we go. Give us a big smile there. <laughs> You're looking very smart this morning, Brent. All dressed up for no Karula. <laughs> yes, BM is the king of doing this. She's just popped out. Well done, BM. And you are the master at spotting animals when in a sighting friends. You've chosen a great spot to stop and discuss things. Well done for that. As, as, as I was saying, about to tell you to get out the way because I wanted to continue. So, so Andrew and I were discussing when we heard those Franklin alarm calling. Whether um, I'm not sure whose vehicle you got a better view on. Oh, there we go, we've got her again, but maybe, yeah. Brent's about to reverse off and get into a better spot. And she is heading right towards the road and Brent's kind of just gonna loop across and shortly should have a good view and I think now would be a good time to jump onto his vehicle. So I'm going to get Andrew to show you that white tip of the tail that we were talking about. Um, that. How's that, Andrew? That's good. So when she when she turns to the side, I'm going to ask Andrew to stay a little bit wide, and and you can see that white tip of the tail. And when she's walking parallel in the bush, that is the 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 really sort of distinguishing thing because there's not many things that are white in the bush. There we go. Uh, for the new viewers, this is Queen Karula, our dominant female leopard and resident trickster when it comes to tracks. And as we were just saying, it's, it's tracking animals is a team effort. And uh, there we go. She's going to pass that. Literally, she's probably closing in now. She's about six feet from the vehicle she's going to cross right behind us and uh, she'll probably end up being no less than about three feet from andrew there we go she's just scent marking on that marula tree as she goes past there we go so she's moving down the road behind us so i'm going to move forward and uh pass it along to scotty who's in a much better position to follow her and I think we're gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll tag Timo. It's not often uh, we get to share a sighting because often there are other vehicles that uh, that need to get in so the guests can see. So there we go. Thank yeah. you. Nice Come VMB. On. Well, isn't this awesome? And like Brent says, such a pleasure to be sharing this wonderful sighting with them now. And like I said earlier, great planning and foresight from Brent and reading into the bush, listening to those sounds. And if it wasn't from, for those sounds that he heard, he wouldn't have waited there. So great work on his behalf. To be honest, I was in a bit of a flat spin in Ferrari safari mode, trying to cover as much ground as possible. But great teamwork and to all of you who may have received phone calls from other Safari Live viewers and joined the show, it's a huge pleasure to have you with us and thank you for those phone calls that were made and at least we managed to redeem ourselves and find this leopard. Sure. It's not remarkable how they can dissolve so quickly into the bush, although I'm going to start the car because I'm not going to let her get too far before she shakes us off her tail again. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. Look at this. Absolutely awesome, and a leopard up on a termite mound is one of the best places you can find them. And I really enjoy being up there, it's a good vantage point. And aren't 
be so lucky to be enjoying the beautiful Karula once again. Now I'm being nice to her now that we found her. You'll notice how fickle I am and how quickly I change tune. Stuart, I'm happy to hear your sequence of comments that we made and like I said there's a lot of luck involved but like I said Brent's maneuvers were skillful ones this morning and again well done to him for listening to the bush and literally predicting where she was going to pop out and you got to Thank those moments out here, and thankfully we're all involved to appreciate this wonderful sighting. I'm just going to move forward so that Brent can sneak past us, and he will then be able to get ready to receive her and get into a good spot for your next views of her. Isn't this wonderful now with the sunlight bathing her coat? Wonderful stuff. Well, what we're probably going to do is um, loop ahead. We're not too far from Gallagher Shortcut, which is another road um, that we've driven around already three times, and I hope that we'll find her this morning. And we'll probably leave Brent to off-road with her. But it's tricky going in there. It's quite thick, but you're about to jump onto his vehicle and you'll see exactly what he has to deal with negotiating with this off-roading. So isn't that absolutely amazing? As I've just been saying, uh, often keeping up with these animals and tracking these animals is a team game. She's moving opposite us at the moment. Oh, I'm just going to stop up in here. And look at that. Queen Karula, sun rising behind her, backlit, a backlit beauty. I was right next to Scott when he mentioned Sharon's comment. Ah, Sharon, you have little faith. Hopefully you'll, you'll trust us a little bit more next time to be able to find them. And as, as much as there's a lot of luck involved, uh, being able to listen to the bush. Uh, if you listen carefully, the bush often tells you what's about. And I like to sort of describe it as sort of we've got, we've got our, 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 our spies out there. Uh, the squirrels, the Franklins, the the Nkudu, the Nyala, the all alarm call at, at at a possible predator. And often your ears help you far more to find an animal than, than your eyes do. So I should find a way through here. Tesla is, is asking, don't they normally scent mark the same tree when marking their border? Uh, they do, and especially when it's a, a sort of a very prominent uh, area used by possibly another another leopard. But when they're sort of moving through the bush like this, they might sometimes randomly scent mark uh, different trees, not always the same. And so, for example, on Impala Road, which is pretty much the boundary between her and her daughter, Shadow, both of them tend to scent mark the exact same tree every time they're in that area. So Scotty's just moving up ahead of her. And he should be in position shortly. But it is really, it's also really great for us. There's that white tip of the tail I was talking about. That is quite often the first thing you spot when you when you spot a leopard you can see how camouflaged she is and you can see how that little white spot just sticks out a little bit more than the rest of her body nice camera work andrew often if the lion is described as the king uh, 
Um, the leopard is the prince of the predators. But now Scotty's in position, so let's go jump on with him and see how his view of Kruler is. Awesome. Welcome back, and we've luckily got into a good spot ahead of her. Isn't this just too good to be true? A wonderful female leopard in the golden morning sunlight and that thrill of finding her after losing her initially. It doesn't get better than this. There's the flabby belly I spoke of earlier, and it's the back half of the belly. And as Prince said, with her older female leopard it can be difficult to distinguish between pregnancy and whether that's just a sign of her age so important that you note that there's a whole network of odd dark burrows that we've had to avoid now um, that we so that we didn't fall into them there they are you can see kind of a lot of loose sand that's been dug up well, it'll be interesting to see if she doesn't sniff around any of these aardvark holes because leopards will feed on aardvark, mainly male leopards though. Okay, let's see if we can reposition. just come through from Ellen Fowler and thank you for saying this because it's a great point and the reason why Karula was easier to find in the past and it was eight years Ellen says that she had four consecutive generations of cubs basically two years to raise each one roughly before giving birth to the next and it's a great great point it's obviously much easier to find a female leopard when she's got two cubs to look after because she doesn't travel as far and obviously there's a lot more sets of tracks to follow because it's not one animal, but three. So, great points, Ellen, and thank you for highlighting that because it also means that we aren't useless at finding her. It just simply was easier to find her back in the day. And let's hope that she gives birth again. She certainly should be able to. And... I'm hoping that last year the reason why we didn't see any cubs was just bad luck and she could well have given birth and just been unfortunate and lost those cubs within a very short period, possibly even twice. There's long periods of time where we don't see her. Now, Brent's in a better spot, so over to him again. So this is the, the joy of having both of us in the sighting, um, is that we can jump between the vehicles and we can try and make sure we're always in the sort of perfect spot and a lot of you might hear that click 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 that's my camera and look at this there's an active art fog set of burrows that she's actually standing on top of right now and you could i can see some fresh art fog diggings and tracks around those burrows and you often find leopards will always investigate a burrow like that. I was hoping she was actually going to head the other way towards a big termite mound, but she's decided to go behind us, which is her prerogative, of course. So, Nisa in Wisconsin is asking, is that what all the holes are from? I'd find. And a lot of the deep holes and, and things like that are definitely from Artfark. Uh, and the Artfark burrows are utilized by other animals later. See, she's looked down into that burrow. She's, look at that, see. She's just checking into the burrow. Front, and smelling what's there. She's now passing less than three feet. Good morning, madam. This is a nice, here we go, scent marking tree. Look at her. Rub her head. And now, one, two, chip, chip. Little spray of urine. And... Uh, smells like with the movies uh, buttered popcorn so there's a nice big termite mound just up here and that's why we moved straight towards here instead of staying exactly where she is Akrula is a great fan of moving from termite mound to termite mound so Scotty's going to try to get into position on the other side of that termite mound hopefully she climbs it and you guys are going to get a fantastic view there we go you can see Scotty getting into position and let's jump across to Scott. Hello everyone, and I'm 
just getting ready to get the VR remote on. Let's hope she walks in front of our vehicle, but I don't think she's going to. Anyway, I'm just going to give a little clap just to sync the GoPro. And here she goes. Just scent marking against that Marula tree. It's one of their favorite trees to scent mark on. And off she goes behind us. And let's see if we can't loop ahead of her again. Now, if we were downwind of that little scent mark, what would be incredible for the new viewers to understand is that she, her scent mark actually smells like buttered popcorn. Hard to believe, but that's the case. And sometimes when we're driving along, we actually get to smell, oops, sorry, uh, we actually get to smell that buttered popcorn scent, and that's what leads us to finding the animals. I'm viewing him, and it's a her, it's a female. Males are a bit bigger. It's a, a lady, like I say, the queen of Juma, Karula is her name. Now, in true Karula fashion, she's changed direction quite considerably, which is making forecasting her movements a little bit tricky, but we're going to spot to get some more views of her shortly. and it's usually around one and a half years of age when they'll start not caring for them not taking them back to their kills and what you'll find is the young leopards will often lurk around hoping to steal mother's easy meals but the parents will become or the mother at least will become less and less tolerant of them Okay, she's straight ahead of us and I'm guessing she's going to come straight to this termite mound. You got her there, Vim? She's just on those broken rulers. Great stuff. So, I'm hoping she's going to come to this termite mound and that's why I've positioned the vehicle here. She is heading straight in this direction, so there is a strong chance that she will be able to come here. Another little up to sync the VR remote or the VR cameras and just to keep everyone in the loop it's a 360 degree camera that we've been playing around with and some of you may have seen some footage of her not her of the VR rig rather and it's exciting times with this technology going forward so bear with us as we test it and try and be ahead of the game with these new toys so she's just laid down and I'm going to stay here, Brent's on his way. He might be able to just slip into a slightly better spot. She is kind of at 10 o'clock from where our vehicle is. I'm just going to chat to Brent quickly. Brent, she's lying down kind of at the base of that broken marula. If you want to get into a spot there, and I'll wait here. So Brent's about to drive through the shop there, VM, and there we go, so... Oh, here she comes. So, as Brent got into a half-decent spot, she decided to get up, 
and she's going to walk straight past the front of his vehicle, or maybe the back. And I'm just going to chat with Ephraim quickly. Copy that, Ephraim. Uh, she's just coming out onto the fire break now. Uh, keep coming. And is she going to pop up onto this termite mound? She could well look carefully. They often creep up. And here she comes. There she is. There's her head poking out. Absolutely wonderful. Look at this. Great side profile. And she's actually seen something. And what she's seen are some zebra up ahead. Now, it's not easy to see. And what I'm going to ask VM to do is, I know you've got Brent's picture of Maybe VM can try and pan across to the zebra, which are off to the thin through some quite thick bush there. But at least you'll get an idea of possibly where they are. Now it's too thick for them to get a, a, a view of them. But there are some zebra up ahead there. Oh, well, there we go. Andrew's got them. Oh, well, there so, go. Andrew's got a little turn one there. Leopard and zebra. And welcome back to our view. Perfect golden sunlight. And take some screenshots. You may have heard I've been taking a few photographs. This is certainly worth documenting. And if you do take your screenshots, please upload in, uh, upload them and tag us in them. We love to see the pictures you guys take. And I'm just going to try and sneak up and get a better spot now because this opportunity to take some photos of Prince and Andrew is just too good to be true. I've got, I think, Andrew's new profile picture here. And I think Brent's trying to do the same thing here. And And there we go. I've got one or two nice snaps there, I think, of. Brent and Andrew, and isn't this just wonderful? Two of us enjoying the sighting together. Doesn't happen very often, and she's stopped in the perfect place because she's about 50 meters away from our northern boundary. So the longer she stays here, the longer we can spend it there. And. A lot of the game viewing we do is that we've got very little impact on these animals and to be allowed insight into their lives without impact on them, impacting on them, is a huge thing. It's what we're about. We don't want to get in their way. And judging from her behavior now, you can see it's as, as if we are not even here. for that is going to be an explanation for a question that Doug has just sent through. Doug would like to know if she would have been followed from a little being a little cub, her and her mother, and yes, she would have, and I think her mother's name was Safari, quite a well-known leopard who, just like her, is habituated and is relaxed with the vehicles, not concerned by us. And most of the leopards in the Sabi Sands are currently in that same boat. They've been exposed to vehicles from a young age, and it's been about 50 to 60 years of hard work from guides taking their guests out here day in and day out that affords us today with these beautiful, beautiful leopard that are completely habituated to, to us. I'm going to send you across to Brent's vehicle just to see what the view is like from there. So we're almost perfectly positioned from a lighting point of view. Scott and VM have that wonderful morning light falling on her. 
and we've got this incredible backlight that sort of illuminates her from behind. There we go. You can see Scotty taking pictures there um, and Veer concentrating intently. <laughs> there we go. Scotty having a wave. There we go. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? So now we're going to tell Scotty he needs to pose uh, for the picture. But it is quite nice to have two very different points of view. Uh, and cameramen like to embarrass each other and there's Andrew using super zoom on VM. Let's come back to the, the leopard there, Andrew. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, if you're given a cam cameraman a chance to put another cameraman on camera, they take it with both hands and as quick as possible. But isn't this incredible? And it's, it's so nice that we're able to actually both spend time with her quite, quite, quite often. Um, the only one of us will have the opportunity. Look at that, she's going to walk. Oh, isn't that awesome? I hope you guys get some screenshots of Scotty D Safari and Karula. She's going right next to Scott. And unfortunately, she is heading towards. And we're going to jump across to Scott and to Scott's vehicle. Welcome back, everyone. And we're just going to roll back casually into a better spot. And it looks like she's heading straight to that marula tree for another scent mark. Uh, interesting how that is their favorite tree to scent mark on. I guess it's probably because it's one of the most prominent large trees in this area. And there she goes, just about to do it. Chip, chip. And VM was just taking some troubles with the the camera ca or the, the, the cables or the various cables that plug into the camera. They got caught on the tripod there and it was preventing him from swiveling around. So some of you may want to be wondering why there was a little bit of a delay on his camera work, but we're gonna probably send you across to Brent now who's managed to loop ahead and you should get some great views from him. Towards um, our northern uh, traverse boundary, uh, but oh, she looks like she spotted something uh, inside the juba, which is always better, in our opinion. Uh, she's looking directly east at the moment. I wonder what she might have spotted. I'm looking back there, I can't see anything, but there are often lots of impala and dike and stambok in this area. Oh, that's good news for us. It looks like she's changed her direction. And is heading east parallel to our northern boundary. in Virginia Beach is wondering about the collective nouns of leopards and he's wondering which one is used in ambush, a prow or a leap. Well, I can tell you for a fact, as a, a great fan of the collective noun, uh, that the correct term is a leap. And Eric's wondering, even though they are mostly solitary, solitary, have I ever seen a leap of leopards? I have. It was actually a fantastic and really interesting sighting. In the Sabi Sands, I've seen seven leopards in one sighting, and I will explain that a little bit more in detail later, but let's just enjoy the leopard that's right next to us for now. There she is, checking Andrew out from the back. Uh, I think Scotty, is, she's going to pop out right in front of Scott's vehicle shortly. There she goes. And where Scotty is, and you just see the front of his vehicle to the left there, that is our, the end of our, our, our traverse, but you never know what happens. She might change her mind, and hopefully she does. So we're going to cross to Scotty, who's got the best visual of her at the moment. Now, it looks like she may have heard something or seen something. She, She's twitching her ears and looking very, very focused. Even that little tail of hers is telling a wonderful story. 
slowly flickering from side to side. And who knows what it could be in there. It's incredibly thick bush to our left. And hopefully this will delay her a little bit. Ephraim from Cheetah Plains is making his way here. And let's hope that he manages. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Awesome. We don't get to see them stalking very often. And this is incredible to see. I wonder what she's noticed in there. And this light is absolutely spectacular. Perfectly backlit. backlit. What have you seen here, Karula? What is up ahead? Look at this, the leopard crawl. As she flattens herself to the road, too good, too good to be true. What could it be? And I'm just gonna keep the vehicle dead still now. We don't wanna have any impact on what's going on here, but there certainly is some potential prey up ahead. Oh, there's a herd of impala. And they are slowly moving from her left to her right. So moving east. And this is great. This is going to be wonderful to watch. Anything's possible. The Impala could head further south towards us. And if they do, she's going to try and get ahead of them into a position where she can simply lie in wait for them to approach. So I'm guessing what she's going to do is she's going to start actually moving to her right. Look at her tail twitching from side to side there in excitement and like I said because they're moving from left to right she's probably gonna do the same thing and try and forecast their movements and lie in wait in front of them it's far easier for leopards to lie and wait for their prey than obviously creep up on them because their movements and the sounds of their movements won't be detected oh she's hissing at something what could it be she could just be hissing in frustration that they're heading the wrong way or possibly at a bird. I think I've just seen a forktail dronga come and land next to her and it could start alarm calling and give away her presence. So maybe that's why she let off that little snarl. And another hiss. It's a pity we can't see her frontal view, but like we've said, this is our northern boundary that she has just crossed over. Thankfully, the animals don't have any boundaries. And you can probably now see from Andrew's camera, there's a little bit of movements of the Impala. Not easy to see. But exciting prospects and we don't see action very often with regards to kills and the only kill that I've seen in the whole year of being here was actually made by this very leopard just about this time last year. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to reverse a bit and the reason why I'd like to reverse is I want to use a very open pathway for these impala to approach it. If our vehicle's here, they're going to take a naturally wider path and possibly avoid walking into her. We don't want to have any impact on this situation. And by keeping a wider berth, it may increase our, our chances of having some luck. We're going to send you across to Brent's vehicle now. So, we're not going to move. And the reason we're not moving at all, it's because we're directly behind her. So we don't want to interfere at all, so any movement might cause the Impala to look towards us. So that's why as soon as we spotted the Impala, we switched off the vehicle, and, and we're not going to move from this position uh, unless the Impala spot her, uh, or she, she, she moves in a different direction. But isn't this incredibly exciting? And a leopard's an incredibly patient animal. So the majority of that Impala has actually moved past her from what I can see. She'll be watching, perusing, seeing if there's maybe a little injury or a bit of weakness. Or maybe waiting for the babies. And I've actually seen leopards wait a 
all day on a termite mound in the area where an impala herd is waiting for them to come closer to her. Look how she's gone flat to the ground. Just north of this little mountain drain between us, and she's just lying flat on the ground. I just want to leave a big gap for these mallets. So, let's have a look. She almost looks like she's cleaning herself. She might. So now while we're watching Karula in, in hunt mode, Curtis from Virginia is wondering what is the biggest prey a leopard can take down? Well, Curtis, one must remember there's no f hard and fixed set rules with this type of stuff. Generally, leopards like uh, your small to medium-sized antelope. So that's sort of from your Steenbock and Diker up to Impala. Although here, uh, we have had those male leopards that quite regularly kill adult female kudu, which under normal sort of circumstances are considered too big uh, for, for, uh, for a leopard, but they do it. And I've even seen a male leopard, a big male leopard, uh, take a baby buffalo out of a herd. So I would say probably, probably kudu, um, baby buffalo, even a baby zebra, um, up to a sub-adult wildebeest are sort of the biggest uh, prey a leopard will, will go for. But females and a gorilla who we see quite a bit of tends to, to prefer your smaller game, your stembok, uh, dikers, baby impala. Oh, look at that, her ears are up. Um, they're still, this is a big herd of impala, they're still constantly moving through. And if we go off to the... Oh, we can't really see them now. So there's a big problem, Andrew. If you come up to the right, see where the elephant dung is? And zoom into that gap there. So zoom into that gap. Uh, to the right slightly. I know there's the impala and come down to the ground. So if we look carefully there, there's Franklin between her and the impala. Um, you got the Franklin there. Um... Sorry, just um, come out of it, Andrew. Um, so a little bit to the left. Oh, you got the Franklin. Right you. Left, you come out. Left, to left. More than welcome to come and join. Into the next gap. There. There they are. So that's probably why she hasn't moved closer. I'm pretty sure she's seen those crested Franklin. And if she had to move, they might give away a position. So for her, now it's better to keep still and wait for those, uh, those Franklin to, to maybe move past her. Uh, and she might lie completely flat and try not to disturb those Franklin because if those Franklin alarm call, and that's how we found her this morning, it, it might alert the Impala to her presence because uh, they will definitely take note of a, a stressed Franklin call. It pays to be vigilant out here in the bush when there's creatures like Karula trying to eat you. Numa on YouTube would like to know where specifically she is on Juma. Well, if we want to be technical, Nemo, she's actually in Buffalo's Hook at the moment, so she's crossed that road that you see between her and us is uh, our northern traverse boundary. And she is uh, in the western section of our northern boundary between Galago Shortcut and Mvubu Road. I can hear that contact call between female Impala and their babies, that burp, 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 burp. And there's Impala still walking past her, but those Franklin are just in the most inconvenient position for her. Otherwise, this would be a really really good spot she's got this acacia thicket around here so she would be able to stalk quite close uh, if the franklin weren't there so the franklin are directly between her and the impala at the moment Franklin haven't spotted her, come on. So, you see the Andrew? You go where the mitre drain is. I just don't want to miss if she does something. Yeah. Uh, she, I don't think she's going to do something. She's going to come north towards. 
I mean, so west, northwest towards Scott, she's trying to avoid the Franklin. So there, there, there she goes. She's avoiding those Franklin and moving further to the north. Okay, yeah. I'll make your way out. Yeah, here. and she's going to head off across the boundary. What a fantastic sighting it is, and it's so sad to see her go across. Uh, but uh, we're going to cross to Scotty, uh, who found her first this morning, and leave him for the first, the last few visuals we get. And Andrew and I are going to head off to the east and to see what else we can find. Well, what a wonderful morning. Of course, it's going to be sad, like Brent says, to wave her goodbye. But again, well done to him for picking the perfect spot to wait for her to pop out after we lost her for quite some time. And look at how careful she is. She doesn't want to be too brazen now and give away her position, even though she's not kind of focusing on those Impala. I wonder why she doesn't want to, like I say, give away her pos position, let everyone shout and cause everything far and wide to know that she's here and she's just laid down in the perfect spot to do some grooming. I'm just going to get a hold of Ephraim quickly just to tell her, him exactly where she is because he's been sitting patiently with his guests without having a visual of her. If, if you keep coming and then just pull in in front of my vehicle and park here, you can get a good spot. And I've just told him to go straight in front of us. So he is going to obscure our view for a while. But he's too kind. Ephraim, you're too kind. You should have gone straight in front. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Just go. Okay? Yeah, it's fine. I Definitely. Um, and once he's got into a good spot, then we should still be able to see her. We, we will reposition because, like I say, he's been waiting very patiently to get his guests a good view. Tom asks a good question and would like to know if she's been moving north into the wind. Um, some people believe quite strongly that when big cats are on the move, they will always move into the wind because that increases their likelihood of not being detected by their prey and therefore having better success hunting. To be honest, Tom, I haven't really noticed that um, in my uh, big cat viewing. And they simply go in whichever direction they please and don't really take the wind into account. This morning there's hardly a breeze and I wish I had my ash bag with, with me to show you which way the wind is blowing. But it's blowing very, very gently towards us from kind of into our faces. So in a westerly direction. Um, but it's ever so gently. Maybe what I'll ask VM to do is there's some little blades of grass here, VM, just in the foreground that are very, very gently kind of dancing towards us. And if you just try and pick one of them, there we go. If you look at that one there, you can see that it's slowly kind of getting blown in our direction. So the wind is not in her favor. And more often than not, like I say, I don't think the big cats are as clever as people give them credit for. And if I had have been Karula now, I would have looped back onto this road and run straight down it. It's slightly sunken in, so it would have been a good position for her to be able to lie and wait for those Impala, yet she hasn't done that. So they, yes, are incredibly agile. Yes, they've got incredible speed and agility, but they are not as clever as we make them out to be.